up guys, happy Thursday. It's Matt here back for another edition of Every Day in the Word. Uh, looking forward to opening up the book of Deuteronomy here with you. I've been enjoying going through this. Uh, basically sermon from Moses to the people of Israel before they cross over the Jordan um, rivers into the promised land. And uh, he's going through some intense topics. If you think uh, back to yesterday and days before, we're talking about death, we're talking about sexual immorality, we're talking about all of these things that the law talks about. We know, obviously, Exodus chapter 20 and 10 commandments, and we see uh, those themes show up here. Committed adultery, we talked a little bit about that yesterday, we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. Uh, talking about murdering, what that looks like. We talked a few days ago about, oh, is that war? Is that uh, killing intentionally? Is that killing unintentionally? So we're seeing these themes continue to pop up. So continue to keep that thought in your mind, the Ten Commandments. But today, we're going to be talking more uh, about that commandment to not commit adultery. So uh, again, a little bit more intense uh, verbiage we're using today, um, but good for us to digest and to understand uh, because this is God's word. So Deuteronomy chapter 23, we're going to start here in verse 1. No one testicles are crushed or whose male mortar is cut off shall enter the assembly of the Lord. No one born of a forbidden union may enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the tenth generation, none of his descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord. No Ammonite or Moabite may enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the tenth generation, none of them may enter the assembly of the Lord forever. Because they did not meet you with bread and with water on the way when you came out of Egypt. And because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beor, from Pethor of Mesopotamia, to curse you. But the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam. Instead, the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you, because the Lord your God loved you. You shall not seek their peace or their prosperity all your days forever. You shall not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. You shall not abhor an Egyptian, because you are a sojourner in his land. Children born to them in the third generation may enter the assembly of the Lord. When you are encamped against your enemies, then you shall keep yourself from every evil thing. If any man among you becomes unclean because of a nocturnal omission, then he shall go outside the camp. He shall not come inside the camp. But when evening comes, he shall bathe himself in water, and as the sun sets, he may come inside the camp. You shall have a place outside the camp, and you shall go out to it. And you shall have a trowel with your tools, and when you sit down outside, you shall dig a hole with it, and turn back and cover up your excrement. Because the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp, to deliver you and to give up your enemies before you. Therefore your camp must be holy, so that he may not see anything indecent among you and turn away from you. You shall not give up to his master a slave who has escaped from his master to you. He shall dwell with you in your midst, in the place that he shall choose within one of your towns, wherever it suits him. You shall not wrong him. None of the daughters of Israel shall be a cult prostitute, and none of the sons of Israel shall be a cult prostitute. You shall not bring the fee of a prostitute or the wages of the dog into the house of the Lord your God in payment for any vow, for both of these are an abomination to the Lord your God. You shall not charge interest on loans to your brother, interest on money, interest on food, interest on anything that is lent for interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but you may not charge your brother interest, that the Lord your God may bless you in all that you undertake in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. If you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay fulfilling it, for the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. But if you refrain from vowing, you will not be guilty of sin. You shall be careful to do what is past your lips, or you have voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God what you have promised with your mouth. If you go into your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes as many as you wish, but you shall not put any in your bag. If you go into your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the ears with your hand, but you shall not put a sickle to your neighbor's standing grain. All right, so we see some miscellaneous laws. Uh, your ESV Bible say over the top of verse 15, we see some stuff about who, who can uh, enter the assembly uh, of the Lord, and we see some uncleanliness in the camp. Um, some more rules and regulations for the people of Israel specifically. Um, so do they necessarily apply to you uh, on a one-to-one -one ratio? No, not exactly. But I think there are some principles we can pull from here. Like you look down at verse 21. I think that's something that can apply to every single person watching this video right here. Making vows, making promises, um, swearing, all of those things of I'm going to do this or I'm going to give you this, or I'm going to make sure that I will not go back on my word here. Um, super important for you to not go back on your word. We're going to see that actually in the book of James. If you're one of the students continuing to go here through the end of uh, the book of James, we're going to see what it looks like to make our yes, yes, and our no's no. Um, and so that's a really important thing for you to do. Even today, when you tell your mom you're going to, you know, take the trash out, you better take the trash out. You better not make sure she beats you to it. You got to do what you say and you got to not do what you not say, um, if that makes sense. But it's important for you to make sure uh, you are keeping your word um, and not uh, swearing wrongly, if you will. Uh, so a good takeaway from, from this chapter. Uh, I know a little bit it gets a little complicated, uh, but... I think that is definitely something that we can take away. So Deuteronomy chapter 24 now. Let's dig into that chapter. Chapter 24. When a man takes a wife and marries her, if then she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, and puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house, and she departs out of his house, and if she goes and becomes another man's wife, and the latter man hates her and writes her a certificate of divorce, and puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house, or if the latter man dies, who took her to be his wife, then her former husband, who sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife after she has been defiled, for that is an abomination before the Lord. And you shall not bring sin upon the land that the Lord your God has given you for an inheritance. When a man is newly married, he shall not go out with the army or be liable for any other public duty. He shall be free at home one year to be happy with his wife whom he has taken. 
No one shall take a mill or an upper millstone in pledge, for that would be taking a life in pledge. If a man is found stealing one of his brothers of the people of Israel, and if he treats him as a slave or sells him, then that thief shall die. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. Take care in a case of leprous disease to be very careful to do according to all that the Levitical priests shall direct you. As I commanded them, so you shall be careful to do. Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam on the way as he came out of Egypt. When you make your neighbor a loan of any sort, you shall not go into his house to collect his pledge. You shall stand outside, and the man to whom you make the loan shall bring the pledge out to you. And if he is a poor man, you shall not sleep in his pledge. You shall restore to him the pledge as the sun sets, that he may sleep in his cloak and bless you. And it shall be righteousness for you before the Lord your God. You shall not oppress a hired worker who is poor and needy, whether he is one of your brothers or one of the sojourners who are in your land within your towns. You shall give him his wages on the same day, before the sun sets, for he is poor and counts on it, lest he cry against you to the Lord and you be guilty of sin. Fathers shall not be put to death because of their children, nor shall children be put to death because of their fathers. Each one shall be put to death for his own sin. You shall not pervert the justice due to the sojourner or to the fatherless, or take a widow's garment in pledge. But you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore I command you to do this. When you reap your harvest in your field, and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat your olive trees, you shall not go over them again. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not strip it afterward. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this. Again, some more miscellaneous laws. Um, and though it might not make sense, it's important for us to see who God is and see what his character is through these, uh, through these various laws that maybe do or do not apply to you. Um, and so we see some things about God here in chapter 24. We see he takes divorce very seriously. We see that uh, he, he, God cares for the poor and for the needy and for the sojourner, for those uh, who are just traveling through the land. Uh, you see at the end of the chapter talking about making sure that when you've got a field and you're trying to collect all your, all your grain, you, you leave a little bit. Um, you don't go try to get every little tiny piece of grain that you possibly can, but you leave some for the poor, for the sojourner, because God cares about those people. If you remember the story uh, in the book of Ruth, M Ruth is a Moabite, so she's from the other side uh, of the Jordan River. So she's from the, the she's, she's not a citizen of Israel. And so she comes over and um, Boaz, he's got this big field and he leaves a little bit along the edges for uh, the soldier for for outsiders and uh, he did that and he ended up getting a wife out of it because he cared for her he gave her food when she didn't have any income in and of herself she she was just generously given stuff um, from Boaz and so we see that come all the way back to Deuteronomy chapter 24 Boaz was a godly man who was who was obeying what this chapter had to say so again I know that lots of the laws are seeming complex or seeming boring maybe to read, but it's important for you to dig a little bit deeper than the surface and see what God or who God is through uh, commands like this because God is all over the book of Deuteronomy, even when the when the laws and the commands seem to uh, not apply to you. So keep a, keep a close eye out for that. But let's, let's finish up here with Deuteronomy chapter 25. Chapter 25. If there is a dispute between men, and they come into court, and the judges decide between them, acquitting the innocent and condemning the guilty, then if the guilty man deserves to be beaten, the judge shall cause him to lie down and be beaten in his presence with a number of stripes in proportion to his offense. Forty stripes may be given him, but not more, lest if one should go on to beat him with more stripes than these, her brother be degraded in your sight. You shall not muzzle an ox when it is treading out the grain. If brothers dwell together, and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the dead man shall not be married outside the family to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go into her and take her as his wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. And the first son whom she bears shall succeed to the name of his dead brother, that his name may not be blotted out of Israel. And if the man does not wish to take his brother's wife, then his brother's wife shall go up to the gate to the elders and say, My husband's brother refuses to perpetuate his brother's name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of a husband's brother to me. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak to him. And if he persists, saying, I do not wish to take her, then his brother's wife shall go up to him in the presence of the elders and pull his sandal off his foot and spit in his face. And she shall answer and say, So shall it be done to the man who does not build up his brother's house. And the name of his house shall be called in Israel, the house of him who had his sandal pulled off. When men fight with one another, and the wife of the one draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of him who is beating him, and puts out her hand and seizes him by the private parts, then you shall cut off her hand. Your eye shall have no pity. You shall not have in your bag two kinds of weights, a large and a small. You shall not have in your house two kinds of measures, a large and a small. A full and fair weight you shall have, a full and fair measure you shall have, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. For all who do such things, all who act dishonestly, are an abomination to the Lord your God. Remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you came out of Egypt, how he attacked you on the way when you were faint and weary, and cut off your tail, those who were lagging behind you, and you did not fear God. Therefore, when the Lord your God has given you rest from all your enemies around you, in the land that the Lord your God has given you for an inheritance to possess, you shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. You shall not forget. Okay, again, some, some various laws here. Um, one of those, the big section of this chapter is talking about the leveret marriage. And maybe that is the first time you ever heard of leveret marriage before, but it was basically the idea of, you know, 
your your married and your brother is not and, and you die and your wife you don't have any kids and so your wife is just left as a widow with no kids your your brother was supposed to come in and supposed to uh, take her as his wife and then continue the family name and the family tradition and heritage um, because again god cared about the people of israel and about them being a numerous uh, nation if you think back to the book of Genesis. What does he tell Abraham? That your sons are going to be as, as many as the, the stars in the sky. And how do we do that? We have kids. And so that is is what he uh, commanded here for someone that dies. His family member is supposed to come in, take, take his wife, and, and continue to have more kids in, in light of his brother's death. So again, not maybe something that you should look at doing today as a New Testament Christian. But again, it teaches us something about God and who 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 God is and what God cares about. So, uh, good good couple of chapters for us to digest here uh, this morning, Deuteronomy chapter twenty three through twenty five. But now I want to flip over to the book of Luke, um, see what what's going on here in Jesus's life, Luke chapter ten. We're going to be reading Luke chapter ten, verse thirteen through thirty seven. Luke chapter ten, verse thirteen, or Luke chapter ten, verse thirteen through 37. Let's get it started right here. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable than judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy-two returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding, and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three, do you think, proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go, and do likewise. Okay, so very familiar parable here today, uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Um, hopefully you're familiar with it. Um, but it's a story of this guy coming up saying, Hey, Jesus, what do I need to do to follow, to, to, to go to heaven? What do I need to do to have eternal life, he says in verse 25. And so Jesus, he says, the, the, the two most important things of the law, it encapsulates all the book of Deuteronomy, is loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Loving God and loving others are the two most important things you can possibly do with your time and the two ways that you can obey God if we sum up the law in two things. So, the guy is trying to justify himself. He's trying to say, well, I, 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 I love my neighbor. And Jesus is saying, hey, I don't know that you love your neighbor as much as you think you do. Um, because he tells the story about this guy who uh, was stuck on the side of the road. He's hurt. And uh, all these people pass by. First guy is a, is a Levite, so a priestly tribe. Or first guy is a priest, rather, verse 31. Uh, so he, he should have been very attuned to, to righteous and holy and religious things. He, he leaves them. Then the Levite, the people, the tribe of Israel that was supposed to be the one that was supposed to be doing the doing the ministry, doing the priestly ministry. That guy, nothing. And then a Samaritan, whose Samaritans were hated by the Jews. They were they were half Jews. So you've got some full Jews, mom and dad are both Jewish, and then some half Jews where they've intermarried with with other um, bad uh, people uh, of the day, the Assyrians. And so the the Jews didn't like the Samaritans because they thought they were sellouts to to the world. And uh, so the Samaritan here, he loves this 
this guy who was hurt, he binds up his wounds, he gives him money, he sets him on his animal, he takes him to the inn, and then he tells the innkeeper that he's gonna pay for, for all of his expenses if he needed more time at the inn. And so what Jesus is trying to do is, is say to this guy who was trying to justify himself, saying, hey, do you really love as, as well as you think you do? Do you really love the way that God requires you to? And so, again, the, the implied answer is, is no. And so what he finishes this parable and he says in verse 37, he says, go do and go do likewise. And I think that is a good push for us today. Go and do likewise. Go love like the good Samaritan did. Going all the way, not loving people just a little bit, trying to check a, check a box, but loving them completely all the way. And so that's a great takeaway for us for uh, this morning's uh, reading. Um, Luke chapter 10. We'll be back, Luke chapter 10, tomorrow. But now I want to turn over to the book of Psalms, Psalm 75. I'm going to do another psalm here together. It's been nice to, to, to read the psalms. They've been a little intense recently. Um, but God is, is worship. God is praised through this, through this inspired psalm book, uh, song book, also known as a psalm book. There you go. Um, you're welcome. So psalm. 75. Let's read the whole psalm here together. Psalm 75 says, We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. We recount your wondrous deeds. At the set time that I appoint, I will judge with equity. And when the earth totters in all its inhabitants, it is I who keep steady its pillars. I say to the boastful, do not boast. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horn. Do not lift up your horn on high or speak with a haughty neck. For not from the east or from the west, and not from the wilderness comes lifting up, but it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed, and he pours out from it, and all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down, drain to the to the dregs. And I will declare it forever, and I will pray. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob, and all the horns of the wicked I will cut off, but the horns of the righteous will be lifted up. This song is all about worshiping God for his, his equity, for his justice, for his sovereignty, being in charge, being the, the final judge at the end of all of this. And so we praise him. Verse 1, we give thanks to him. We recount all of his wondrous deeds. It's important for you today to recount all the wonders that you've seen God do in, in your life or God, that you've seen God do in, in all of history or even thinking here about God being the judge. You've got to praise God for that, that he is going to execute firm and swift justice. Um, scary, but good and something we need to praise God for uh, and sing to him. He's going to cut off all the horns of the wicked, but he's going to lift up the horn of the righteous, he says. So we will be blessed if we continue to pursue God, uh, loving God, loving others, as we learn in Luke chapter 10. Um, so great reminder for us this morning. Now I want to flip over to the book of Proverbs, get our daily Proverbs in. Proverbs chapter 12, we're going to read verse 12 through 14 here um, today. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 12 through 14. It says, whoever is wicked covets the spoil of evildoers, but the root of the righteous bears fruit. An evil man is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous escapes from trouble. From the fruit of his mouth, a man is satisfied with good, and the work of a man's hand comes back to him. Again, we see this idea of diligence, this idea of working hard, of doing the right thing, and how, that's a, how that will be blessed by God. We see the evil man and the wicked, those who um, tr try to covet the spoils of the evildoers, um, those who are ensnared by the transgression of their lips, they're, they're gonna, justice is going to come to them. And so uh, another good thing for us to think through, righteous and the wicked, the righteous and the wicked. How can we pursue being the righteous person today? How can we not uh, transgress with our lips? How can we use our lips for good? something for us to chew on and meditate this morning. Um, so again, hopefully it's been encouragement to you. Um, I've been enjoying going through um, all four sections of the Bible that we go through. Um, but we'll see you again tomorrow. I think I might even have a special guest with me tomorrow. So tune in and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow.